increasingly familiar. These dramatic images foreshadow the everyday consequences of sea level rise. Flooding in coastal cities, already being reshaped by rising waters. You know, Miami and Miami Beach, these are areas right on the coast. That's why people want to live there. It's a great joy to be on the water. But you need to be cognizant. The data is definitely telling us that sea level is rising and that rise is here to stay and it's very likely to become worse. That's because climate change is altering and exaggerating tidal patterns. Providing momentary glimpses of what's to come. Gradual and potentially devastating local impacts. Sea level rise isn't detected in one big wave. It's much more deceptive. It's not a surge that's gonna just one day appear. It's much more of a slow motion disaster that's sort of unfolding in front of our eyes of this flooding where uh, water is not supposed to be. It's not like we're gonna wake up one day and, and everything's underwater. William Sweet is an oceanographer with NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. He studies sea level rise, its causes and impacts. While Sweet points to a global average rise of one inch every eight years, Bruce Mowry, the city engineer of Miami Beach, Florida, says he's designing solutions for water levels rising almost five times as fast. We're looking at about a one foot rise about every 20 years. And so what it means that within the next 40 years, we're expecting somewhere nominal about two feet. Two feet of sea level rise in Miami Beach is very detrimental. To say the least, Using information from a number of sources, including LIDAR elevation data from NOAA, scientists from the nonprofit Climate Central develop this interactive tool to better visualize the potential impacts of sea level rise over time, street by street. At two feet, much of the west side of Miami Beach is flooded, including this intersection at Alton and 10th. A four-foot rise inundates much of what's left. And it floods parts of Miami's financial district across Biscayne Bay. Here at Perkel Avenue between 14th and 12th Streets. Six feet of water would leave sections of MacArthur Causeway underwater, isolating whatever remains of Miami Beach and a rise of seven or eight feet of water would impact Miami International Airport. While these extreme projections may be hundreds of years in the future, Miami Beach already knows what it means to wade through sea level rise. 903, this is the intersection of 34th Street and Indian Creek. In recent years, Residents have experienced elevated high tides at certain times of the year. Known as king tides, these events are clear evidence of incremental increases. Right now, we are definitely witnessing uh, sea level rise impacts, these high tide flooding events that are growing in severity, more often deeper, more widespread. That's sort of a, a pattern that we expect will continue. In fact, Mowry's first day on the job happened during one of these events four years ago. And I actually came to work on a King Died day, or that week. And they toured me to the city, and it was a sunny day. We call it sunny day flooding. That actually, it was no rain, no clouds in the sky. But we had water rushing into city streets. So my job was to basically look at uh, stopping the flood. So he quickly went to work to save this city on a sandbar. Step one identify the weak spots. The uh, city of Miami Beach is actually a barrier island, and the original barrier is relatively high. That's along the Atlantic Ocean. The back side of Miami Beach was originally mangrove swamps, was filled, and it's actually the lowest part, and so that's where we're most susceptible from the bay side. In adopting a multi-pronged approach, Miami Beach has committed 400 to 500 million dollars to combat sea level rise building water pumps, and raising their defenses. 
with the continued issue of climate change and sea level rise, we're seeing a increase of water level every year. We had to make changes to adapt to this future condition. What you're seeing here, we put a boardwalk initially to give some height, but we found that that wasn't protecting the city. What we've done here is we've increased the levels of our new seawall. The new wall you see in the background here is our new standards. This is good for approximately another 50 years, and we're gonna see water levels challenging even that new seawall. Raising its elevation, Miami Beach seeks to stay dry and take control of its future. Despite circumstances beyond its control and some of the most dire projections, Politics aside, the discussions surrounding climate change and how to deal with it center on a number of related data points. Emissions of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, global temperatures, glacial and polar ice melt, and sea level rise. So more mass, more water is going into the ocean basins. We can measure this. We actually have uh, satellites that go around and orbit and tell where mass is actually changing. So where's ice being lost? Then we measure it both in Antarctica and Greenland. And it's the combination of those two are adding approximately about two thirds of the rise that we see globally from another satellite that can sort of measure how our sea level's changing. Regional differences, however, will differ greatly throughout the world and the United States. Sea level isn't rising like water in a bathtub. It's rising at different rates around the world right now. Measurable items, yes, but dynamic and constantly evolving, and therefore subject to interpretation and differing analysis and projections. something Climate Central visualized around the world. Even at the president's Florida compound, Mar-a-Lago. It's really about how you bound your problem and how you initiate your models. In a world of less heating, less emissions, sea levels could be maybe maintained at the current rate that they're rising now. So it could be a span. And at NOAA, we put out a, a range of about 0.3 meters a foot by the end of the century, all the way up to maybe eight feet. And a lot of it's very uncertain. It's really sort of dependent upon uh, how much uh, emissions that we, we pump into the atmosphere and the associated heating that drives the models that really guide our outlook in terms of future sea level. Former top NASA climate scientist, the outspoken Dr. James Hansen, now leads a climate science program at Columbia University's Earth Institute as the lead author on the paper, Ice Melt, Sea Level Rise, and Superstorms. He suggests a greater probability for more extreme conditions, including higher sea levels, and sooner than most anticipate, even if global temperature rise is limited to two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Hansen's team looked at Earth's ancient past and concluded the modeling does not represent current reality. We show that from paleoclimate data that most ice sheet models are more lethargic than the real world in which sea level is known to have risen rapidly many times. So instead of using an ice sheet model, we simply assume that when warming occurs driven by a growing climate forcing, the rate of ice melt will grow nonlinearly. According to their calculations, if fossil fuel emissions continue at high levels, we could see sea level rise of several meters and the loss of all coastal cities. That means huge financial costs. One real estate study claims property losses in Florida could be more than $400 billion by the year 2100. Another predicts two and a half million Miamians could become sea level refugees and leave the area. No doubt sea level rise will alter infrastructure programs throughout South Florida, in part because of Florida's porous limestone foundation. Saltwater intrusions jeopardize underground fresh water supplies and is already impacting decisions on the placement of water wells and the use of more expensive desalination technologies. 
back on the front lines of the fight. Miami Beach has no plans to surrender. The city's philosophy, our culture, is rising above. We believe that we can meet the challenge. And the challenge is not only in rising above, meaning elevation. It's rising to and, and withstanding the challenges that have come with sea level rise due to climate change. That means adapting to new realities, utilizing new technologies, but not dismissing simple solutions. Building a road higher is not something that's never been done. We're here in Sunset Harbor in Miami Beach. This sidewalk we're staying on here today was the original elevation of this whole street. This was one of the lowest streets in the city of Miami Beach. We had parachute flooding occurring all the time in the main street and on this sidewalk. And so what we did is we've elevated the street by a half feet. So we brought in dirt, we brought in soil, we built up a new platform. That's a building base of what we're gonna do. We also had to renew all the infrastructure, put in all new lights and so forth. You can see that if this was the existing, and this was the existing street, this is now the new street elevation. This is 30 inches that we've raised here. We felt like that was necessary to give this street at least another 30 to 50 years life. This is probably not the last time this street's gonna be raised. That's because the lifespan of each project does not represent the lifespan of the community. The goal is to keep Miami Beach a vibrant, economically viable city for tourists and residents alike long into the future. As a city engineer, I have complete faith that we can win. We can mitigate. We can survive. There is nothing here that we can't achieve. 